It's a fire sale. Adidas is liquidating all of their Yeezy products, and this is my first pair of the 500s. Even though I didn't buy these from Adidas, I bought these at Chic or something for retail, so I got ripped off, so that's great. Did the sale happen after? The sale's on the app, no. and yes, it did happen after. So. To be fair, you would have bought the wrong size. I know, This this I was gonna say that later, but yes. A little behind the scenes magic. How's that behind the scenes? You're, you, you, you jumped the gun. <laughs> That's what happened. They weren't with us. They didn't know where you bought them. They didn't know that you had to try on oh, multiple is this, pairs. Oh, is this, is this at the end of the video? <laughs> I don't know where this is at right now. I'm lost. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. Today, we had a detailed look and breakdown. Yes, a little late. A few years late, actually. This is the Adidas Yeezy 500. Ooh. But before we deep dive into these guys, real quick, we do have a quick word from today's sponsor, Soul Premise. And just in case you're unaware of what Soul Premise actually is, they provide premium or luxury style bags. But the catch is, is that they are all catering towards sneaker lovers. <gasps> They have a wide variety of different options and different materials and different colors. So as an example, this guy right here is just their daily commuter bag. This is essentially just a regular backpack, but the difference is that they can hold two pairs of shoes in there up to size 15. Excellent. I personally love these bags because when I go on short trips, I'm able to wear one pair and then stick a secondary pair inside of the shoe storage. And then instead of opting to throw in a third pair of sneakers, that's where I actually put my clothes. And then when I'm going on longer trips, this bag right here is what I typically like to use. It holds up to five pairs of shoes. On top of all of that, these bags are TSA approved. They can fit underneath the seats or in your overhead compartment. This particular one is made out of polyester instead of a more premium leather. So there's different options and varieties depending on what you want. Last but not least, this is my favorite bag and the one that I use all the time, mostly because, well, we're gym rats here, and I also test shoes for a living, and this bag right here lets me do all of that stuff all at once. This is a brand new version of their gym bag, where this one is decked out in premium goodness, and I'm not gonna bring this one with me because I don't wanna ruin it and get it all wet and sweaty. So instead, I bring this one, but the good news is, is that they both fit four pairs of sneakers, which is amazing. If you have your testing shoe, then your backup shoe, and then maybe there's a backup for the backup, and by chance, maybe a backup for that, I don't know. What I like to do is fill it up with three pairs and then my leftover compartment has my change of clothes deodorant my water bottles a basketball pump and then for my airpods and whatever else i might be bringing there's a ton of storage options for that too so for whatever your needs are soul premise has probably got you covered so if you're interested make sure that you click the link down below in our description box it'll send you over to soul premises website soulpremise.com where you can check out all the variety of different options all the different colors what's on sale all that kind of good stuff and with that being said these are just ugly okay they're just ugly i know that this is a fan favorite amongst the yeezy models it's like touted as the most comfortable and all that stuff but gosh dang these are just hideous man hideous but they are comfortable i'll give you that now these guys right here are just a really interesting shoe because this is how can i say it like nicely like overpriced like a mother these guys right here are also like really weirdly designed too. They just look kind of funny, you know what I mean? But they use stuff from Adidas's past or its heritage. So there's that, I think that that's cool. Does it work well together? I don't know, that's up for you to decide. Obviously for me, I think that they're kind of boo-boo, but other people love them, so it is what it is. The midsole and the outsole tooling are actually reused or repurposed from the Adidas KB series, the third iteration to be specific. Light bulb. Now moving on up, we have an Adipreen midsole. At the time, this was like the most comfortable version of feature wear that they had done when it first released with the KB3. And I still think it might be the most comfortable version, period. Unless you consider the boost stuff, like the feature wear with the boost, that's crazy. But anyways, it's an Adipreen midsole. So basically it's like a, a variation of EVA. It is very comfortable. Is it super comfortable, like boost comfortable? Not quite there, but I feel like it's more of a neutral comfort, which I prefer. So the older that I've gotten, the less cushion that I need in my shoes. Like if anything, I don't want really much of anything in there casually performance wise i want something in there but casually just you know give me the basics and while this isn't quite basic it's close enough and i think that it's very nice underfoot and if you were curious about the insole it's actually this guy right here this is a prime example of an ortho light that's not a piece of sh this is awesome so you got different variations of their foam you've got different densities and it's in strategic zones so you've got a stability feature which is the exterior and then you've got the softer pieces which are in the interior minus the red which is even firmer than the exterior so that you have some arch support and things like that so this is a great example of a solid insole that comes with the shoe hey 
Look at us. Look at us. Huh? Who would have thought? Not me. Now moving on up, the upper is really interesting because that's the part that I think is ugly. This upper, I just don't know. I don't know, man. Like they look weird. I've seen these for so long. I see so many people wear them on a daily basis. And every time I'm like, wow, they're funky. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Am I wrong? You're not wrong, Walter. You're just an ass. But as far as the materials go objectively, super nice materials, man. The main body is just an open-celled mesh, so it's lightweight, it's breathable, it breaks in quickly. So all of those things I think is a huge plus, especially from a wearability factor, which is what I think that this model really is. is overall wearability is really high up there despite how funky they look. So I think that that might be its like best-selling features. They've got solid traction, very comfortable midsole, very comfortable upper. The materials on top of that, like the overlace, are all really nice. So this particular one is all suede. And so in that sense, like, I feel like this is one of the better Yeezys, but I don't think that's like my favorite Yeezy as far as visuals go. But yeah, I really like what they've done. So you've got that open celled mesh on top of that, like the little webbing stuff that you can see under the mid layer. That's all actual leather, very nice leather on top of that. And then on top of that, the overlays, like I was saying, they're suede varying depending on the colorway. But for this one, it's all suede. I love it, dude. Like this is... I don't like this weird rand right here though. It just feels like rubber, you know what I mean? So I don't love that. I also think it looks weird. I wish it was the same color as the upper. It looks like I got tape on my shoe. I don't like that. Now the one thing that I definitely dislike and it seems to be just on like this colorway and that other gray one that was sitting there, they're definitely not on all of them. Or maybe they are and I'm just like, maybe people cut them, I don't know. What What is, what is this? I don't like this. I can't wear them the way that I want. Like they're and super glued together with this rubber piece. What do you do? Do you leave it? Do you cut it? Do you swap out the lace? What the f what do you do with this? I'm surprised you don't like it. Why? Because I don't tie my shoes? Yeah. But I like the dangly. Okay. <laughs> That's what I like. I like the dangly piece. Okay. I like having the thing just droop over and it's just bunny ears, whatever you want to call them. Like, I like that. I don't like this. Why, why is it like that? Now, as far as fit is concerned, this is where I'm glad that I bought them in store and got ripped off a little bit because otherwise I would have just ripped myself off by buying them on sale and not being able to wear them because they fit hella small. Like even this size, this is a half a size up. I could probably have gone to a 10 and I never say that ever. So yeah, this is one of those shoes where if possible, try them on, but definitely go up half a size minimum. If you have a wide foot, you might want to go up a full size because they're fing tight as shit. And I'm not even going to say this, the laces, because I did try to lace, unlace them as much as I could. And uh, they're just snug and they're short. I did not like that whatsoever. It was a shock. I was like sweating trying to get my foot in there. That was from a different conversation from a previous video. But with all that being said, do we happen to have time for a question of the day? Please make it good. It's a behind the scenes one. Oh, okay. An I like actual... those. I like those. How do you store all the footage to bring up later? It seems like there's so much footage and you can always pull it up. What do you mean? So I'm going to butt in and say that the easiest way for us to get exactly like the best clips that we have obviously used before is for me to just go in through the back end and re-download the finalized video that we initially used because we already yes we already know like the colors right the angles right like this was the best image that we wanted to put out originally and so we're just gonna go and snag that and to do that you just re-download like the 10 minute video and right. pull the piece that you want. Yeah, and then sometimes you'll see us just throw on a uh, thumbnail, just letting you know that like that's where we talked about whatever we're talking about. Yeah. But if it's a visual, like we just did this with like the Curry's, the Curry 12, mm -hmm. where like the support features were similar to the previous model. And we had that stuff shown in one of our episodes of the podcast. And so I wanted that clip. So I downloaded it real quick, snipped it up, put it in there and that was it. It definitely cuts down the time in which we would have to go search for the backup and stuff like that so i dig that and yeah it just works out but with all of that being said sound off below and let us know what you think about the yeezy 500 is this your favorite model if it is why is it for the comfort is it for the looks or maybe you're in my camp where it's like they're butt ass ugly but they are really comfortable they are well built as far as materials and you know the quality and stuff like that so like the overall awkwardness of the the visuals you can get past you know what i mean so sound off below and let us know on top of all of that are you still a fan of the yeezy product Product? Or were you one of those people where it's just like only when he was on board were you cool and then now it's like meh, whatever. But thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. Sound off below. Let us know what you think about everything discussed in the video. We will catch you guys on the next one. So until then, y'all have a good one.